the book of Isaiah chapter number 9. That's where we find our text. But I said you cannot understand it actually unless you start the previous chapter. And actually from verse chapter 1 up to this verse, there are things that are happening in the life of Isaiah that are so dynamic that it leads him to write the verse that we are going to read in verse 6 and verse 7. But it starts in verse number 19 of Isaiah chapter number 8. When someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and muter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Distressed and hungry, they will roam through the land. When they are famished, they will become enraged and looking upward. They will curse their king and their God. Then they will look towards the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom. And they will be thrust into outer darkness. Nevertheless, verse 1 of chapter 9. There will be no more gloom for those who are in distress in the past. He humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of sea beyond the Jordan. Verse number 6 and 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace will be no end. He will reign on David's throne, and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with the justice and righteousness from that time on forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you'd speak to us in a language we can understand in this season of Christmas. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I've cut it into two and today we want to look at unto us a child is born. Tell your neighbor unto us. A child is born. Now Isaiah starts the season, the Advent season, with those profound words. He says, unto us a child is born. This prophecy, he did it on the 8th century before Christ. And these words have the authenticity of one who has experienced the wonder of and majesty of God's presence in their life. So he's not just speaking. He has been involved in. He knows. He's not just, it is not just saying it for the sake of saying it, but he knows it by experience. He has been there with the Lord and he knows what he's talking about. This week as I thought about what I'm sharing with you, it came to me that when we talk about Christmas, it has two things. One of it is doctrine. There is nothing we can do about doctrine. We believe in God, the Father. We believe the virgin birth. It's a doctrine. We believe it. And we, can, we fight for it. We stand for it. We defend it. So in one way, it's doctrine. But in the other one, it's history, which you cannot rub. In the gospel of the first letters of John... John says this, that what we are writing to you, we are witnesses. We saw it. We, we saw Christ among us. We saw Christ die and we saw him rise up again. So Isaiah is coming from that. The prophecy that he's giving, he is giving it from the knowledge of experience. He's giving a testimony of what God can do. And too often people just speak the word of God. And sometimes they have no experience. They do, it has not worked in them. It is what others have said. But from Messiah, he's talking from a passion of what God has done. And no wonder then, if God, if you have seen God, if you have experienced him, there should be a change in your lifestyle. Meaning that what you do should be different. Meaning where you should go, it should only be beneficial to you. And also that what you say should be encouraging. You know, you don't just say things for the sake of saying. 
You ask yourself, is it going to encourage someone? Is, go, is it going to uplift someone? So Isaiah is coming from that background. There is a change within him. He's going to speak some things. There must be encouragement. And if there is going to be change within us, that change should be in my life work. Meaning, what I put my hands to do should enhance the kingdom. So whatever I do should relate with the kingdom of where I'm going. Where, I, where Again also, what I put my heart in should be a blessing to God's people. So that what my passion in my heart is, other people can be blessed of it. And what I set my mind to do should usher people into the kingdom of God. And this is where Isaiah is coming from. There should be a change. And if that change happens, it should usher people into the presence of God. There should be a change in my lifeline. Meaning that I should depend on God's word. I should develop a God-like mind. I should be assured by God's word. That God will provide and God is able to do that which he has promised me. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because Isaiah himself is the one who says... In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. In other words, nobody saw him on my behalf, but I did. When the king died, God allowed me to see him. I would see what my help, where my help comes from. And he says not only that, he met the Lord. And in that moment, he realized that God is holy. So he says God is not just holy one time. He says he's holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord, and the whole earth is filled with his glory. So what is I trying to tell us? The change must happen to a point that even what I'm saying, the words that I speak are words to encourage. Not because the situation has changed, but because the God that I trust in has promised. And his promise are yes and amen. In other words, when a child is born to us, there is something that he is trying to tell the people that were around him. This is important. The words that Isaiah is telling us. That he has seen the Lord. It is important. Because they were living in dark days. The people of God were living in dark days. The northern Israel was besieged. Damascus had been captured. Judah was invaded. Nineveh and Jerusalem were destroyed. And it is in those dark days. Those dark people who are being uprooted from their homeland. It is in that situation. When they are going to captivity, it is in that situation where Isaiah says, no, these things will come to an end. There will be no gloom to the people of God, though the situation was still gloomy. Oh, may God help us to be people that can put life into others. The situation in Kenya could be awful. But may we hear men of God that will see God, believe God, and they can see a year from today and tell us what God is going to do in two years or three years to give us hope. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, he's talking to them when they are going to foreign gods. When somebody has a problem, you go for these foreign gods to, 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 to chat and say something. You, you, you know, sometimes we, we get amused. And we get amused in this way. You know, Africans, we are mythical. We are so mythical. And some of you, when we tell you there are things that happen in this world, some of you refuse. If you bow under those gods, they will demonstrate themselves. Mama moja amekata kuzikwa. Amekunja ngumi za vita. Walio kuja kumuangalia ili waweze kuta, kuesema. Wakasema ni kwa sababu dauri ya muku toa. Now I'm, I'm still waiting to hear. Walipo toa dauri, mikono ili kunjuka. But you see, you might laugh at them. You might say, oh wow, wow, backward. They are not backward. Ni hile miungu wanaamini. Lazima demonstrate. No wonder Isaiah is saying, for those, demonstration was there. But for you, there will be no gloom. Those people that were in darkness, the Bible says, I've seen the marvelous light. So I can move from darkness into marvelous light. And to him that is in Christ, he's a new creature. But you know, those things are there. Mama amekata kuzikwa. Watafsiri wakakuja wakasema, sijana alikuwa amekubali. Amekata kwa nini? 
kuna kitu wakaangalia wakakuta hawakwenda mbali nafikiria ni kwa sababu walijua relatives walikuwa nagoja ka kitu miaka hiyo yote dada yao ameolewa so wa ndugu wakasema ni mtoe mbusi mtoe ile kitu wa mko umetoa na wengine hapa wananiangalia bishop what are you telling us amjasikia mtu watu mkataa kuzika mtu kwa sababu hawakutoa dawari haya toa dawari mapema So Isaiah experiences a conversion that gives him clarity to his sinfulness and urgency to the needs of God righteousness. So when he is coming to tell us a child is born to us, that child gives to Isaiah the sense of his sinfulness because he comes as a savior and the urgency of God's righteousness. And I pray that as many as have known the Lord Jesus Christ in them they will carry hope even in a hopeless situation we can still speak hope bless our children amen some of them never got what you thought they would bless them declare blessing i normally say the way to the university one door can be locked but there are some windows certificate diploma and then finally you land there kwani kuna ubaya gani kuna ubaya gani ninauliza kuna ubaya gani unajua some of you look at us and wonder tulitokea wapi tulitokea wakati university ilikuwa moja ndio tulitokea competition ilikuwa juu sana wacha hii mchezo bwana na mlango ikifungwa ilikuwa inafungwa na koji lakini kuna watu walikuwa wakisema hiyo imefungwa bas narudi nyuma kidogo tu unaiotea unaingilia kwa dirisha moja unakuta ka mlango ka nyuma alafu akija kukuangalia wanakuta labda unaweza kuwa mzee Una, they used to, to call it mature entry kwa sababu wewe si mulika wewe si 844 wewe labda mnasoma na, 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 na mtoto wako but you see the idea is i missed it i will not miss it again and though that is hope in other words i can still speak hope to my child that don't you worry my daughter my son you will make it in life because this this the, the examiners are not god they are just people who examine us because kenya wants people to be examined but god ule mungu wetu hey, kuna watu watabariki na nyinyi mume wa right off eh hey? una right off mtu alafu baadaye unakuta hey? kuumbe Hivyo ndivyo Mungu anavyofanya kazi. The words that we speak. We, 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 what a better testimony then during this season that we can talk about that God wants us to get to where Isaiah got because Isaiah experienced that conversion. He hears the voice of the Lord saying, "Whom shall I send?" and Isaiah responds, "I am here, send me." And that is the prayer that after my conversion i can get to a place and say here i am lord send me i want to do something for you what a better testimony one can give during this season that god will give us a willing spirit to serve him that god will give us a willing spirit to proclaim him that god will give us a willing spirit to do what god wants to be done to redeem the world from destruction for unto us a child is born what better testimony can be given during this season that to respond to god's call that we can all say here i am lord send me you know we find ourselves within a world that seems to be spinning around out of control terror alerts i in all high we are afraid even of the shadows because we don't know what is behind them You know when I was growing up the only thing we feared was wild animals. Wild animals. I I grew when Chosho would cook food and we would ask her Nishiao. Because she would cook food and put them na mataha na kaihori you know she would pakua them with kaihuri put them on a getaruru whatever that one is and then put them out to dry right na ni nyingi na shindwa 
Shushu, what is going on? Lo and behold, anybody passing? Moriaga. Tonyai. You know, everybody Tonyai. And somebody will come in and apeo itaha. Nana peo mae gekobe. Sio chai kana ushuru. And, and to make things even very interesting. Somebody passing. What the echo? Hey, hey. Trodete Nairobi. Eh, hey, Mugwa Kinyari. You know that kind of a talk. You are, they even don't know where you are coming from. Maybe you are coming from Nyiri. And you are going to Nairobi. Now, umebeba kamodegi. You know, umebeba tuguo. Tuwako umefunga. Tuna kashuka. Unaenda tu. Mulima ukipanda. Udasikia shojo na kuita. Modo. What the echo? Nairobi. Tonya, anakupa mahali pa kula na hakujui. Bwana asifiwe. Na nikakutilia kidogo. Yeye sasa mimi nilikutilia ikiwa kidogo. Wengine tulikuja Nairobi. Si kwa ndugu zetu. Tulikuja kwa watu hatujuani na hatukule wametoka hatujui. Mimi nilikaa na ndugu ambaye sikujua yeye ni wa wapi Nairobi. Na tukakaa naye miaka mingi, wacha miaka kidogo, miaka mingi. Lakini roho wa uchafu na shetani Watu wakaanza kusema ni wa kristo Unampa pali pakulala Ukisha vuta na kupasua mbao maratatu Saa ile uko unapasua mbao ya mwisho Anakusanya vitu zote Unajua saa ile unapasua usikiegi ya mlango ukifunguka Kwa sababu unapasua na ile musumeno mbrevu Anatoka na mali yako Sasa mtu kumpa mali pakulala Siningumu Na kilala unafunga na kufuli unaweka kufunguo chini ya na hajui. Ili akijaribu kutoka, hachindwe kutoka. Na zamani ilikuwa the other way around. So, shoshua likuwa uh, that way. Chakula kingi na ninaona wengine wanasema ni kweli. Na uji, na ujue na pikia nani. Lakini hakikuwa ikiaribika kwa sababu wamejua kuna watu watapitia pale wakiwa safari ndefu. So the world is full of those terror. Yaani hata giza ukiona. Giza. Mimi nikija kanisani Jumapili kwa sababu mimi uji wa mapema sana. Uja na mpango. Ninaangaliaga mbele sana. Siangalie hapa. Naangalia huko. Nikiona kuna gari imesimama, naanza mchoro. Sio kwa sio kwa ubaya. Ni mchoro tu. Mchoro, <laughs> hii gari ikifanya U-turn anywhere. Can it succeed? Kwa hivyo naanza mchoro. Na kujuliza kuna mtaro pande hii na pande hii. Yani ikifunga barabara, how am I going to go? Nikikuta watu wanatoa mugu. Nikiwa mbali tu, naangalia huo mugu unatolewa upande gani. You know, hata asubu ya leo nikija. Leo, I came a few minutes to five. Una zi, unaangalia tu. Pane marorue niliona kuna something. Kwa hivyo nikaanza kuangalia pavement ya upande huu. Nikaona hiyo, naweza rukia pale. Mtu wanaweza niangalia, akute gari hiko uko. Nimemuacha hakiwa meja kwa barabara. Kwa sababu unaenda barabara ambao ni hakuna na kuna kagari kamoja. Si. Oh. Wagine mnaedaga tu, mnafuga tagari tu. Hapana. Gari unaipa nafasi. Akisimama, unasimama. <laughs> Siku moja tumekuja na alis, tunapita kabarabara kengine kakwenda nyumbani. Kigari kikubwa, kiprado. Kona kimekuja pole pole. Bele yetu, kikasimama. Na vijana wawiri wakatoka, ni kama wanatoka ku. Atu kuenda kuhauliza hamujambo. Apana. Tulipiga tu. Tulipo zunguka. Kupita upande ule mwingine. Tukija karibu na geti ya kuingia kwetu. Icho kigali kilikuwa hapo. Atitena ni kama kimehalipika. Lakini saa tukakuja. Those are the times that we are living in. And those are the times that Isaiah lived in. We find ourselves not only in a world spinning out of control. 
it is not also not involving into a community, but it into anarchy. There seems to be no center. The life's anchor seems to have given way. Where are the absolutes of life? What can we depend on? Where can we go for assurance and affirmation? Isaiah is living at that time. And then he gets to a place and he says, unto us, a child is born. It doesn't matter the situation unto us, a child is born. And the times of Isaiah and our times are, are not different. Men are so mean. Men are full of violence. Men are, have no faith in God. People are ruled by the forces of darkness. Isaiah is touched by God in a unique way. God gives him an assignment. Speak to the power of darkness. Speak to those powers. Arise and speak to those powers. So Isaiah is speaking to those powers. He is also found encouraging the people with the prophecy. He tells them, if you are looking for a sign from the Lord, don't look for it any further. He recalls to them, please hear me. The Lord will visit us like he did the children of Israel when they were battling with the Midianites. The Lord told Gideon, Gideon, that he had too many people with him to go into battle. Asking the Lord to go to the battle. So he was told, ask the people who are afraid to go back. You know, and, and you know, listen, Gideon, when we read the story, we think he was enjoying what God was doing. But I tell you, he wasn't. One time, when money was scarce, you have very little. And the money you have cannot even take you to Nairobi. Haitafika shiriki moja ya kuja Nairobi. Ni 75 cents. Alafu Mungu anakuambia hiyo yote peana. Anambia Mungu si nikiagomba omba ni ogezo 25 cents nipate shiriki moja na sana peana. The, to give it you feel pain because this is all what you have. Or maybe you are here and friends you have been saving, you want to buy plot, you want to build. And the resources you have is not enough. And God tells you to give it out. You will behave like Gideon. He, milioni tatu. Eh, buwana. Si, mebaki milioni mbiri tu. Si, ungeniambia ni goje. No, he tells you, give it out. It can't help you. Give it out. Let somebody else be helped. And I will come to help you. Gideon, let the afraid ones go away. He thought there would be only three people to go away. Over 20,000 left. How would you think Gideon felt? He thought he was going to win a battle with over 30,000. He thought, I'm going to win, but on God says, reduce it. And when he had the 10,000, he still thought, I can still go to the battle. And the Lord tells him, reduce them some more. Oh, how do, am I going to do it? He tells them, take them to the river to take water. And I'll show you the guys that I want you to go with. So he goes to the water, and Sam Niwangwana. Wangwana. Wanaweka siraha chini. Maji wana jurori wanafanya hivi kwanza ziondoke. Jurori ni tusamaki tuigine tulikuwa kule kwetu zamani. Sio samaki ni tuvitu tuigine. Unafanya fanya hivi, unakunywa maji kingwana. Wanapiga magoti. Mungu wanamuambia, wale wote walipiga magoti, warudi kwao. Wale wameramba maji kama umbua. Hao, hao ndio utaenda kushinda nao. Now I think like Gideon, from, from all those many people to 300, and you think he was smiling? One side he was saying, God, you have said it, but God, can't you imagine? Oh, 300 ni wadrogo, tukia kuata elfu kumini sawasawa. But God is telling him, I want you to go with only 300. I don't know what God is telling you. We, we don't need a lot of forces, because if you go with a lot of forces, my uncle, my brother, my relative, if I win in that battle, then I will be priding myself of my relatives, my uncles, my, my abilities, and so on. So Gideon, go so that when you win the battle, the Lord will receive all the glory and all the honor. So he went to the Amalekite, and with the peaches and the trumpet, he won. So that this story can be true. The battle is not yours, the battle is the Lord's. For unto us a child is born. This is bold statement because not only was Israel and Judah under attack at that time. 
they were also divided. But Isaiah comes and says, For unto us, all of us, divided slaves and those that are not within us, for unto us a child is born. A bold statement. Isaiah speaks a word of unity to the community because he says, Unto us is for us all. Christ is for us all. No Jew, no Greek. To all. To all of us. That is good to know that God's grace and mercy is available to all of us. You and to me. And you know God does not distinguish us. Because of where we were born. And you know I like speaking that. He does not separate us by what we may have. He definitely actually does not care which school you went to. I don't know why I'm repeating that again. Doesn't care. Some of us, wherever we went, is not even important. Actually, what we are doing right now is more important. That does not mean you don't go to where you... If God takes you there, fine. But that is not... It is immaterial. Can you imagine when your time will come to die, if somebody gives you an opportunity to say anything, you will not lament of the school you went to. You will even wonder only, how about my wife? How about my children? Those are the things that you worry about. What happens to all these things? The money in the bank... I don't know what happens. You are not even bothered or you don't even care about. But unto us, a child is born. Sometimes we distance ourselves from our neighbors. But the blessing of God are not for chosen few. Isaiah says they are for us. They are for us. God's power is not reserved for those who would boast or those who would brag. His power is made manifest by his will and it is available to all of us. For unto us a child is born. There are three things that we learn from this Isaiah opening text. A child being born gives us number one, expectancy. Expectancy. When times are, when times are tough, when the way is dark, when you don't know which way to turn, God will make a way out of nowhere. Here people are so confused, they don't know what is happening. And this heart says, hey, hold on. A child is born. A child is born. Now, I imagine when Moses was born as a little baby and put in, in papyrus uh, uh, basket and put on Nile. And out there, there was some expectation that God will bring deliverance. But I don't think they thought Moses would. But they had expectation. They, they live with expectation. When times are tough, when the way is dark, when you don't know which way to turn, God will make a way out. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. A spiritual key of God is your expectancy. Because expectancy is tied to faith and faith is tied to belief. Oh, I love expecting. Expecting. Things are not right, but I am expecting. Expecting. Just like a mother when she feels something wonderful happening in her womb and her body makes the necessary changes for the expectancy of a newborn child. Just as preparations are made to arrange maybe a room or those that have no room to arrange for a court, whatever it is. Those that have room, you want to ask which color, you know. Is it pink? Is it blue? For the soon to be born child. We, oh, we do prepare. Just as baby showers. You know people come and. You know in our days. Baby showers. Irikuwa kubatisha. Hatukujua mtoto atakuwa namnagani. Kijana. So we used to buy unisex. Tuguo. Ni kwa sababu akizariwa siya mezariwa. Akini sasa. Technology nayo. Ati unambio. Wile nakuja kuzariwa. Nika iretu. So from there. Nini wakikuyu wabawa kulikuwa na muzea na fikiria di atazariwa. Tayari anajua hazariwi. Hagojei. You know, tulikuwa tunagojea. Nikari kukachia ruo. You know, we are all there. Nikairetu. You know, and so on. So now they know it. But expecting. You do many things because of expectation. You do so many things. For the soon to be born child. You remember the wonder that we saw in Abraham's wife, Sarah. She wanted... 
She was confused. She did not know how she can conceive. But God comes direct to her and tells her, is there anything too hard for the Lord? In other words, what Isa is trying to provoke us is to get to a level and ask ourselves, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Please help me preach to your neighbor. Ask them, neighbor, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? You know we come to church and sometimes we forget if, even if there are things that are troubling us, he's there. And you know you need to tell yourself nothing is too hard, nothing is too hard until you believe it. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. And that is what his eyes is trying to tell us, expectancy. So expectancy, two, three things. It's based on God's shallness. Shallness. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It, the, 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 the expectation of God is on shallness. This person waiting up upon God shall renew their strength. Two, they shall mount up with wings. Nothing will hinder them. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not faint. In other words, I'm saying, you that are listening to me because you are expecting God to come, you will walk, you will run. There will be nothing that will hinder you because is there anything to hard for the Lord? Nothing is to hard for the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A child, for unto us, a child is born. Number two, a child is born. Potentiality. Potentiality refers to the powers a child possesses. Any child can surprise you. <laughs> you know, this week, Bwana wa bariki sana wala muna nitupagia tu vitu tuzuri. Hako ni kazuri sana. Katoto, kalikuwa miaka ine wakati kidero alikuwa ni governor. Kalikuwa. Kwa hivyo, kana cheza cheza tuka kiulizwa. Kana ulizwa. Na chachi hiyo. Kana ulizwa tu. Governor wa Mobasa ni nani? Kana cheza tu kukwile watoto wanachezaga. Hassan Joho. Kana ulizwa tu. Ay. Governor wa Nairobi. Evans Kidero. Kana ulizwa tu. You know when you look at that. The potentiality of that child at that level. Every child has a potential. I think start talking to your child even before they are born. Prophesy to them. They, they have a lot of potential. So a child is born, there is potential. There is potential. Kegine nako karini situa sana. Kametoka Uganda. Kida, 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 kida kitabu ya bibiria. Kako na kitu ya kumanisha yesu ni nani kwa hiyo kitabu. Kanaanza Genesis. Na haka miss. Kanaenda yote vitabu na haka miss. Bwana asifiwe. Wengine hapa ukimuuliza Nahumu iko wapi? Nini inakuja mbele ya Nahumu? Mwingine atasema kuna kitu inaitagwa Nahumu. You get it? So what we are saying is potential. If you have a child next to you, please prophesy to that child because there is a lot of potential in these children. Potential, potential. There is a lot of things that these children can become. But you have to be Isaiah. So that you talk good things about them. Hata wakati mtoto wa meanguka na meanguka mu, hile mu. Una musaidia. Kwa guka mu, si hile mu ya tia meanguka metereza. Anakuletea mamba ya ajabu na kweli nyumbani. We bado una pro, una prophesy. Kwanza unasema, you will be great in the land. And you know, when you are saying it, you know the spirit within you is saying you are, not, you are lying. And then you say, I'm not lying, I'm speaking the truth. Because she, what she will become tomorrow is better than what she is right now. Isaiah is saying about tomorrow, the country is divided. But he's saying, for unto us, a child is born. Kwa hivyo, ukiona watoto, ata saire ya mekutisha, kapombe ya kunywa, kafegi ya meanza kupiga, wewe, unakata. Unasema, maisha ya huyu, ni bora. That's why I normally say, pigwe ni selfie na watoto wako mara nyingi. Pigwe ni selfie na majirani. Ili mwaka kama huu mwaka mwingine. Uangalie selfie zako. Zita kukumbusha mambo ya ajabu. Mimi ni napoona tupicha tuangu tule ni liesoma na ato shule. Hata kama zilikuwa black and white. Every one of them have a testimony what was happening there. 
hata kama sipendi picha sana lakini tule nilipiga pigo hapa na pale four things about potentiality potentiality deals with the fact that god can do exceedingly abundantly above he can do more than you could ask or think so the potential for unto us a child is born there is potential that god of heaven is going to do much more than i think or even imagine number 2 potentiality deals with the fact that god operates above my own understanding so every time i'll not base anything on my own understanding the bible tells us in the proverbs that you are instructed not to lean on your own understanding but in everything to acknowledge him because he is far above potentiality deals the f- with the fact that though you may now be in darkness you can be led to marvelous light it doesn't matter where i am i'm getting out i could be in some storm now but i'll get out i'll get out i will not be here forever potentiality deals with the fact that though you may be weeping now joy will come in the morning that is potential yani uh, for us a child is born what that does mean it means tomorrow i'm going to live better than i live now why because a son and we will talk about the son on wednesday but today we are talking about the child for unto us a child is born it gives a sense of expectancy and gives a sense of potentiality and finally a child being born gives us a sense of responsibility and i want to say this and if you can hear please this is more important than everything else that i've said it is important in the sense god will not do what you can do he won't god will not do what you can do hata ukiomba ulie na ufunge uende katoloni uende heaven's gate uende chania falls uende mahali popote wanaombea ni kama kuna pesa amekuwekea pale chini hata chukua akuweke kwa mfuko acha kupa kazi ya kuchukua sini yako oh god niko na shida sana ninataka hiyo chakula kijipike kijisavu na kijiko miraculous kianze kupakua kikiniletea kwa mdomo miraculous na mdomo unasiaga miraculous hakuna there are things that god will not do because you can do it Are you hearing what I'm saying? So wacha wacha kufunga na kuomba. Vaa nguo. Vaa nguo. Oh God, unajua najua maandiko. Maandiko inasema ninaweza itisha nguo niseme wewe nguo simama kucha igia. Hakuna. Uliomba nguo amekupa. Sasa kazi ya kuvaa ni, ya, ni yake ama ni yako? Bas wacha kuzide kuomba. Ukibarikiwa kubali umebariki. Barikika then. But God will do only what you cannot do is only him that can do. For example giving us peace in this country you cannot do it he is the one to do it but my part will be to play my part and I play it well. Nicheze vizuri lakini amani ya Kenya ni yake. Amen. But I will nitatangaza kama Isaiah niseme wale ambao tuko gizani tutaona nuru kubwa. Na sasa hiyo giza ndio tunaona giza totoro kila mahali but i will try to encourage people there is light there is light we can make it we will make it me i never ran i used to play volleyball and football but running nearly i practiced too but believe you me i was the best cheerer both for my school in primary our division they used to take me wananitoa shule kwenda kuchia because nikichia napiga nduru na kelele na kila kitu you can make it oh you can make it. oh you can na mimi sikimbi jamaa naye kimbia ni mwingine yuko huko lakini mimi nimeperekwa kwa sababu ninaweza piga kelele <laughs> Hata wakati tulishinda Egypt mchezo wa hoki nilikuwa huko nikichia 
all Africa. Nilitia. Ah, ungenisikia ungefikiria najua kucheza hoki. I don't know. Lakini ninaona watu wamevaa nguo za kwetu zimeandikwa Kenya. Kwa hivyo kwanza kuna jamaa aliitwa Akasa alikuwa ndugu ya pasta wetu mmoja. Ai akichika na Akasa. Hey! <laughs> I know some of you want a bishop are you serious? <laughs> na uze na ukishaanza kushika unaanza kuachia vija si ni vile nakwambia nilikuwa nikicheza gita na sasa hata sitakaki kuangalia kwanza nikisikia inapigwa vibaya mimi waangalia uh, umido pale karibu na mimi ili nimwambie siwende kuambie kuchu sauti ko and i used to mix mimi ndio nilikuwa nabeba vyombo na mix mic sasa siendagi huko sijaingia ile nyumba lakini kama sio nzuri natumana responsibility ni yako you have to be responsible and be a good steward with what i've given unto you that's what the lord is telling us maybe three four things and then i'll be through you have a responsibility of course to guard the good deposit i've made in you and for you four things number one you can defeat the devil that one is guaranteed because the lord has defeated the devil see dio i have defeated the devil that's what god is telling us what is my responsibility my responsibility is to resist the devil not to fight him he's already been defeated ameshashindwa yangu ni kumresist akipitia mlango inamwambia hapo uwezi pita halina ki halina meigua hapo uwezi pita waswahili walikuwa naisema hiyo kawimbo tulifanya waswahili wanasema nini hapo uwezi pita kuna miba ya ya minaitwa ya miti ya ya uchokozi oh bas ha do hota halina ki kuna miba ya uchokozi bwana asifiwe my responsibility is to do what to resist the devil who is already defeated over my sick my body I can resist him. Temptation I can resist him. That's my responsibility. But not to fall into sin and say, "Oh, najua nilijaribiwa hapa sana mpaka nikajikuta hapana." You are responsible ni ku resist. Na usiombe maombi wakati umejiweka giterege. Oh, the drug wewe kama wadhani I feel good, but I know this is evil. Si ufanye hii mkono iondoke. Hakuna mahali inaondoka. Resist. Are you hearing what I'm saying? resist when you are resist number 2 i can move mountains god says you can but your responsibility is to face the mountain because your mountain is not mine unajua unaweza kuwa ukiomba na ni wewe unanisaidia kwa sababu unasikia kuna ka mountain ka financial na unafikiria hiyo ni ya kiroho sana uki connect na hiyo hata tuwe tuko tudogo tutaenda hakuna wewe unanisaidia kusukuma yangu face the mountain and what do you do to the mountain you tell you mountain be uprooted and thrown into the sea whatever mountain it is that is my responsibility for unto us a child has been born that child will not come and throw the mountain he will give us the power to talk to the mountain may you receive the power to talk to the mountain i can be your strong tower the lord says but your responsibility then is to believe you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you it is my responsibility and finally i can shut the mouth of lion yes i can but my responsibility is to pray while i'm in the lion's den you know some of us want to pray before they are in the lion's den when they go to the lion den they are eaten by the lion but daniel in the lion's den that's where he prays and that's where god brings rescue god has rescue for all of us you can defeat the devil your responsibility is to resist him you can move mountain your responsibility is to face your mountain strong tower your responsibility is to, to believe you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you you can shut the mouth of a lion your responsibility is to pray while you are in lion's den we want to pray and i want to ask the ministry team if they can join me and face the congregation as we pray remember we are saying for unto us a child is born